I am going to talk about vector autoregression, which is var. It's going to be simple. So let's load a data into Greta. Um, okay, James, let's, I'll just look for a data. Um, okay, just a second. Let's load the data into Greta. Okay, let me take this one. Then I'll close this one. So what I need to do is that I'll click on this. Um, okay. And because I have not added a time dimensions to it, Greta will ask you to, I mean, specify the kind of data you want to import. So I'll click on yes. And of course, it's a time series. So I'll click and then click on forward. And this is an annual time series. So click on forward again. And the data I took was from 1990. I just that I didn't put the time dimension. So click on forward. And now you can see 1990 to 2020. So click on OK. Then what I need to do now is that let me just check my variables and see if, okay, um, I'll choose not to add any logs for now. The same thing goes for this one. I'll choose not to add any logs. Yeah, okay. Let's maintain it for this way. Then the first step is that we should try and do, um, let's do lag selection here. Let's try and see. So... GDP, export, and then let me just increase the lag and see if it will work for us up to lag four. Okay, so as you can see here, based on the information criterion, it is just giving us, it's showing that lag four is the optimum lag to be used. And as you can see here, uh, this is the Akaki information criteria. This is the Bayesian information criteria, and then this is Hanan Kim. So when you see, look at this place, it's taking the lowest. So when you look from this output, you can see at lag like four, the lowest value is minus 97, 97.2 something, and then the p value is zero, zero. The same thing goes here. You can see the Akaki information criterion has the lowest amount of output here. And the Bayesian also has the lowest. And then the Hanan Kuen also has the lowest. That is why it's pointing to um, lag 4. So here we can perfectly confirm that lag 4 is the optimum lag to be used for the analysis. So I'll close this one. And you have to put in mind that um, this model, the vector autoregression, is checking the interdependencies among the variables. So we will proceed to estimate the vector um, autoregression. So variable, then you go to multivariety time series. You can see vector autoregression here. So I'll come here. Then I will just try and then take all the variables out, then do it this way. So let me just try and put something here randomly for you to see, but it, you can do it according to how you want it but always always make sure that you do the lag selection first before you estimate it so let me just put this one to lag four then the variable all the variables are endogenous so i would just click on ok let's see what happens so i click on ok and then you can see the output is here so you can just do the interpretation by yourself as you can see the significance level of this one um, you can see import imports has an influence on its own self which you can see the lag lag this lag you can see this lags or this lag three and lag four they are all positive so it's it, it is assumed that they positively influence the current import because i believe the lags the lags are the previous periods the previous periods so let's say three years ago, four years ago, um, import influenced the current or simultaneously influenced the um, 
the current input so let's come here you can see that here you can see we have an r square of 97 and then adjusted of 95 and also you can see here we have import here and then we have export and then we have um gdp here so you can see from this side that import influence itself that is why the f statistics give us give us 11.320 and then the p value is significant you can see that export also influence import that's why you can see the p value is significant so you can see here that gdp does not influence import as you can see here so the p value is not statistically significant overall we say that the lag is okay can see because it's significant and here you can see that um so gdp also at this point is at um at uh um 10 percent so it's negative so it's it's it decreases um import so we can move to the next part because when you estimate the vector auto regression it gives you from both directions so now here in the equation one import is the dependent variable equation two export becomes the dependent variable so you can see here that export inf import influences export you can see from the side you can see here just look here so it's a positive the first one let's say one period it has a negative effect because the coefficient we are using the coefficients to look at to, the de to, to determine it you can see that the coefficient is negative and then you can see from like three it's positive like four is also positive and you can see export influence its own self i mean the first period that is the first lag of it it gives us um, a positive and then the lag two becomes negative like three is negative like four becomes um negative so gdp also has a positive effect as you can see here this one is significant at 10 percent so it influences um export so when you come here you can see the f statistics here which shows that import influences export as well as you can see from what we did uh, we saw that export influences import and here import influences export and then export influences its own self because the p-value is significant so you can see here gdp does not influence export so when you move to gdp which is the third equation you can see that import does not influences um gdp from the lag one to lag three but the lag four shows a negative coefficient which says that it decreases it then you can see export export also export also has one coefficient to be negative and then another one to be positive so it has both the positive and negative effect on it because the lag three has a negative effect the lag four has a positive effect so you can see here that GDP does not influence its own self at from this model. So you can see here that import influences GDP, um, GDP because it has a significant p-value, and export also influences um, G, um, GDP GDP as well. But GDP does not influence itself because none of its coefficients are significant here. And overall, you can see. The lag here, lag four, give us um, a p-value at ten percent. So these are the the model we've estimated here, and that you can get other information here as well. The null hypothesis, the longest is like three, and then alternative hypothesis, the longest is like four, and likelihood test ratio. So this also gives us a p-value of um, zero point zero. So when you see this, always pay attention. There can be a problem of serial correlation and if there is a problem like this you need to fix it by yourself uh, of course there's a serial correlation problem you can see here the portmanteau test gave us um 0.0, .0. um so once you are estimating the model mo make sure the model 
meet the classical assumption. So the next step here, you can also do your various tests as well. You can test for autocorrelation. Um, let's say let's go up to lag four and see. So you can see here, as we mentioned here, there is a p value which is all of them are less than four um, five percent. So we we cannot here we cannot say that there is no autocorrelation. Indeed, there is autocorrelation in the model we've estimated. So, the next item is auto um auto regress uh, auto regression auto regressive conditional heteroscedasticity. Sorry, that is um so we can estimate it because it's a var model. And let's go to lag four. Click on it, so you can see lag one. There is no auto regressive conditional heteroscedasticity. At lag two, there is lag three. There is and then lag four. So here. We, there are two p values which are greater than five percent and there are two p values which are less than five percent the next item is here normality of residuals so you can check here here we can see that there is normality because the p value is greater than five percent so we can see that the error terms are normally distributed at this point so we can click on okay here so click on you can close it and here you can also get your graphs here as well you can just click on you can click on this in of them to get a combined residual plot and this is how it looks like you can also edit it you can click on edit it to add the dimensions and other stuff to it so this is it let's say if you want to add full border you can just click on apply and you can see it change when i click on ok you can see i've added the border to it so i can close this one as well then you can go to the inverse route so you can just click on this and you can see from this side how everything is estimated the errors the movement and everything so um this is how you get your graphs also you can get the um, response for this against maybe gdp so you can let's say 10 click on ok and this is the movement for it so you can click on other ones you can check for all of them and you can also click on forecast in maybe gdp and let's say we use the automatic one so you can see the variance decomposition in the variable for gdp comparing export and import as well and i believe this is the way to go about it for var model in gretel and i believe that you practice at home just get example data and make sure you practice at home thank you very much